Sir, uh, I rise to move that the bill uh, further to amend the insolvency and the bankruptcy code 2016 be taken into consideration. You can speak if you want. You can also speak few lines if you want. Sir, should I do it now or after the... Even uh, after? Even now if you want to right, so tell something, you can speak. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'll just make some introductory remarks as to why we have to consider uh, this uh, amendment bill to the insolvency and the bankruptcy code. So till before the uh, insolvency bankruptcy code of 2016 was brought in, the in insolvency framework itself, the insolvency resolution framework was all scattered and fragmented, leading to suboptimal realization or outcome of the intended uh, legislative intent of the bill itself. So the average time taken for uh, any resol uh, resolution of insolvency was almost like 4.3 uh, years. And uh, that kind of a uh, time also involved cost, nearly 9% uh, resolution costs and recovery rate was only about 26%. Just going back a little, we also saw earlier a regime where you had the Sikh Industrial Company Special Provisions Act of the 1985 uh, vintage, and that also failed to produce the desired results. The Sikha regime uh, created a lot of protective wall against recovery and the perpetual control of the management responsible for the mismanagement. Later, um, unlike the Sikha regime, in this particular insolvency code, which was uh, uh, passed, uh, we have a greater opportunity uh, for resolving uh, in favor of the financial creditors, the debtors uh, in the Sika regime had further control even after the uh, Sika uh, Sikh Industrial Companies Act had been invoked, but the debtor continued to uh, keep hold of the and possession of the properties. Now, further, if you were to look at the Surface Act, you saw a, a regime where the focus was on recovery of debts and uh, the object, on, um, in contrast, the object of the code is for rescue of the company so that even if it's in difficulty, the problems are minimized and the losses are fairly distributed and the financial burden is not on any one particular uh, individual or particular category of um, creditors. So the last resort, in a way, uh, for the code was liquidation. And given this kind of a progressive uh, uh, feature, the insolvency and the bankruptcy code acquired a great importance. And post the passing of this, there's been a lot of uh, sense of relief among the companies, which even probably had the chance of becoming a going concern rather than leading to liquidation. So um, the World Bank ease of doing business for India improved post the bringing in of the insolvency and the bankruptcy code. The ranks improved for India, gave a lot of hope for industries that if they really do want to have the process of liquidation brought in, there is an amicable way of coming out of it and also without any uh, black mark on them. So as this was going on, we also within two and a half years of this code realized that there are certain areas in which, for want of clarity, the interpretation given by various codes, codes or even by the NCLT led, uh, led to a very vital question that if the legislative intent of the IBC was itself becoming weakened just for want of clarity. So today as we are coming here with an amendment bill, it is only to make sure that each of these amendments which are being brought in are brought in for greater clarity which is required so that no gray area prevails, no uh, interpretations which are going against the original intent of the act is still prevalent. So you find that in this particular amendment, set of amendments that we are bringing in, of the seven, uh, you can say eight amendments that we are bringing in, four are explanatory in nature. And any Additional uh, amendments that we are talking about are more to uh, ensure that interpretation is given for time which is required and a particular time that has got to be laid before for the resolution itself. We are not leaving it open-ended. We are not uh, giving longer unending time. 
and uh, therefore bringing in clarity in terms of time-bound decisions that are essential to keep the legislative intent. So, uh, in a way, uh, the code is being also monitored by a central government expert committee and the amendments which are being made are made after due uh, stakeholder consultations, a lot of discussion which has been happening through the media and also industries which have been approaching the government saying an urgency with which the set of amendments are to be brought in because courts are also waiting. Uh, the, uh, the, the, I can in fact give the picture of the number of uh, cases which are pending even at the application stage. So this is aimed at, and, and very many big insolvency cases are all waiting for a solution. The balance of interest of all the uh, stakeholders was becoming an issue and therefore we have brought in this set of amendments for the consideration of the House and I, I hope the members would have gone through the papers to see why it is so urgent, why because of the various different uh, interpretations which are coming through the tribunals and courts, there is a fear that the original intent with which this parliament passed the insolvency and bankruptcy code is probably getting diluted. We should not allow the dilution for just for want of clarity and therefore I appeal to honourable members that the amendments be looked at in that perspective and we are here to of course respond to any question that the members would ask but the need is to have this passed so that there is clarity for all the businesses who are seeking insolvency and bankruptcy court to give them a solution. Thank you very much. Thank you.